God. So we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in the mighty name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. You guys may be seated. So the title of my message this morning is titled, It's All About the Fruit. Saints of God, it's all about the fruit. And when I was originally going to bring this message this morning, we're going to be coming out of the book of Mark, Mark 11, 20, verses 20 through 25. So when I was getting into the word last night, what came to my spirit was a Mark, Mark 11, 24. And we all know the scripture in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So I was going to bring a message, uh, a faith message this morning. And every message is about faith because we all live by faith. But I was going to uh, bring a message about, you know, declaring the word, receiving it, watching it come forth into our life and the Lord had me begin the uh, reading the prior verses and I started getting into the prior verses and he really started speaking to me about the fig tree that Jesus cursed and it withered away and he began to show me it's all about the fruit saints of God and what led up to this Mark eleven twenty four 24 is pretty awesome on what he was trying to teach his disciples you know the Bible does say that whatever you when, when you stand praying right and therefore that if you say whatever things you ask you, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And this is so. But we're going to get into some scriptures and some verses prior to what came to this. And if we can begin in Mark 11, verses 12. And I'm going to read through 14. And it says, now the next day when they had come from Bethany, he was hungry. You see that Jesus, he was hungry. Even though he was, he was God, he was subject to the things that we deal with. Amen? So he was traveling. He went to Bethany. He was resting in Bethany, but he had to go to, to work. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And it says, therefore, the next day, or, and seen from afar, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see perhaps he would find something. Next verse. In response... Jesus said to it, was that, did it miss a verse? Let me see. And seen from afar, the fig tree having leaves, he went to see perhaps he would find something. Okay, 14. On it. When he came to it, he found nothing but the leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. You see that they heard it. So we seen this tree from afar off. And Jesus was hungry. He was coming. He seen this tree in it. And it looked like it had fruit on it because of the appearance. It had a lot of green leaves. It had a lot of things on it. But as he got closer and as he got to inspect it, he saw that there was no fruit from this tree. And it disappointed him. And we see the result that Jesus cursed the fig tree. Jesus cursed the fig tree. From a distance, the tree appeared to have fruit because of all the leaves that were seen from afar. When they had gotten closer, Jesus saw that there was no fruit on this tree. This tree was deceitful. We can say that things are not always as they appear. Things that we see are not always of what they look like. A lot of time in people's lives, things aren't always what they appear to be. Just because someone knows what to say all the time, has nice cars, a good job, a beautiful home, and always smiling doesn't mean that life is necessarily good. It's the fruit that needs to be inspected, not the appearance. The Word teaches us that a good tree can't bear bad fruit in Luke 6, 43. Jesus cursed his tree with barrenness, which is the opposite of the first blessing that we see in Genesis 1, and 28. And can we go to Genesis 1, and 28? And this is one of the first blessings. God, God's created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And when he blessed them, he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. 
So we see that God wants us to be fruitful. He says it's all about the fruit, right? Be fruitful in our lives. The produce fruit, right? So this is God's will for our life. The opposite of blessing is, is the curse, and the, and the opposite of barrenness is fruitfulness. God's blessing always brings life and fruitfulness and multiplication in our life. So when we're, when we're, the blessing of God always brings fruitfulness, it always brings growth in our life. Things are always, always going, just like a, a beautiful tree. We see, we see fruit, and to me, when I think about fruit, I think of all different types of fruit, right? You can go to the store, and it could be a hit or miss, right? You could buy a box of apples, and those apples might look so beautiful. They might look so scrumptious and shiny, and you bring those apples home, and you bite into them, and they have no flavor. How many of you ever got fruit with no flavor? It had no flavor at all. And then you got that fruit that looks beautiful on the outside, and then when you bite into it, it's rotten, right? And then you got that fruit, right? So it looks good on the outside, but it's rotten on the inside. But, and then you got that fruit that's good, right? You open it up. It tastes how it looks. It's, it's desirable. It's, it's scrumptious, you know, and, and, it, and it's beautiful. But when I see this story about the fig tree, I see something not doing what it was created to do. And that's what Jesus saw. Jesus saw this tree and knew it was created to bring something forth good. It was meant to feed people. And Jesus saw this tree. It was not doing what it was created to do. And it displeased Jesus. He didn't see the fruit that he knew that it had the potential to have on it. Amen? So God's blessing always brings life, fruitfulness, and multiplication. Fruitfulness always produces healthy growth. We think of trees, right? They produce and they multiply. When you plant an apple tree, we know that you get multiple apples. You don't get one apple. It, it's multiplication because of the life in that tree, because of the nourishment in that tree. It grows, saints of God, and it nourishes. So that roots from that tree bring nour nourishment to the tree and out to the branches, and the branches feed the fruit, saints of God. It's a beautiful thing. Psalm 65.10 in the New Living Translation says you drench the plowed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with, so with showers and bless its abundance, cro abundance crops. Another translation says, and blesses its growth. The Lord blesses our growth. He blesses the growth in our life. When we abide in Jesus, when we, when we, when we uh, abide in the word of God, there's a growth that comes forth from us, saints of God. See, we become fruitful and we grow by where we abide, amen, and where we're planted, right? Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in his courts, the word of God says. We need to be planted in the house of the Lord where the word is going forth, where we're being fed the word, but not only to be fed at church on Wednesdays and Sundays, but also through our daily lives, amen, continually feeding ourselves with the word of God, continually growing and bringing forth fruit, right, to bring God glory in our life. We can't just water a tree maybe once a month or twice a month. No, that tree needs nourishment, right? That tree needs sun. When you go to the store and you buy a tree, see, I made a mistake and I, and I shared this story before I went and I bought a bunch of these beautiful trees. I went to, um, I went to Home Depot and I got all these plants I liked. They look nice. And I went home. I spent all Saturday. I dug about maybe six or seven holes with the shovel. Was out there, got the planting soil, and I potted, you know, and I put them all in the ground. And, and man, they look nice. They look beautiful. And my neighbor, he's a landscaper, and he does side jobs on the weekend. And, and I was out there working, sweating on my knees, digging out stuff. And I was like down to the last plant, and I was just covering it up. And he drives up in his work truck. And he looks at me, and he's looking at me, and I said, okay, I'm waving, he's waving. So he gets out of his truck, and, you know, he takes a couple tools out, puts them on his side yard, and he walks over to my house. And I'm out there toiling, man. And he says, he says, those are some nice plants you got. And I said, thank you. He said, man, I hate to tell you this. He said, those aren't going to live. I said, what are you talking about? He says, 
those are indoor plants. He says, there's too much sun out here. He says, those aren't going to throw. He said, those need to be in the shade somewhere where the shade is. Right. So I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I had to dig up all those plants, put them back. Praise God. Home Depot has has a return policy. Right. I didn't tell him what I did, but I want to tell you. We got to know what we're doing, saints of God. (laughs) We got to know the word that we're speaking in our life, you know, because I had good intentions. It looked good to me, but I was out there laboring for nothing, saints of God. See, we don't have to. A lot of times we don't have to be laboring as much as we're laboring, saints of God. You know, and, and that was a good lesson for me that I learned out of that. I mean. I'll I'll check the label next time, right? But God is seeking fruit. You know, he's seeking fruit in our lives. He he loves to see good fruit in our lives. It pleases him to see good fruit in our lives and us prospering and growing and thriving in the kingdom. You know, not just in our ministry. God wants us to thrive everywhere. Think of healthy life, healthy trees, healthy growth. As believers, this is how God desires us to be continually fruitful, continually growing. You know, and as we produce fruit, we'll see later in the Word of God, God will prune us so we can, He can make room for more fruit in our life. More fruit, more growth in our life. How many of you want to see some growth in your life? Amen. Amen. But when we produce fruit that doesn't glorify the Father, fruit that, that's rotten in our life, see, we take up room for the fruit that can actually be there, saints of God. See, that fruit, God God didn't say that he takes away the rotten fruit. He says, no, when we produce fruit, he prunes us so we can produce more fruit. But when that rotten fruit is in our life, it's preventing that good fruit to grow in our life that should be there. See, we're not actually growing and living the life that we were intended to live. Kind of like that fig tree wasn't living the life it was intended to live. It It was there to produce fruit, but it wasn't producing fruit in its life, saints of God. So we see that God, um, we saw Psalm 65, 10. It gave us a beautiful picture how God rains down, right? On the, he melts the clods. You could picture those hard clods, you know, out in Brentwood where I live, the dirt gets very hard and you have to water that dirt and soften that dirt. And that's what God does, right? He softens the hard places in our hearts. He softens the things in our heart that are in our life that may be calloused over and he, He enables us to receive the implanted word of God into our lives that we may bear fruit in our lives. And he blesses that growth in our life as well. The blessing of God in our lives causes fruitfulness and growth. When Jesus cursed the fig tree and said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again, the tree didn't just stop producing fruit. It was utterly cursed and withered away at its root. Jesus was going to make sure that that tree would never deceive another person into thinking that it had something. It really didn't. Saints of God. And uh, it's, it's, it's all about the fruit, saints. And I had, a, I had something on my mind that I was going to say, but it just slipped me. It'll come back. It says, Jesus, Jesus' response to a fruitless tree is that it wasn't going to bring forth fruit. And I, and I know that Jesus... Knew that tree probably hadn't produced fruit in a while. You know, easily Jesus, when he was on the way, Jesus could have actually said, tree produce fruit in Jesus' name. Right? So when he came back, it would actually have fruit for him to eat. So he could have done that either way. He could have have said, tree, I command you to grow fruit. That next time he grew, he would see fruit. But he did the opposite. He cursed it and said, no one's going to ever eat from you again. Saints of God. And that tree hadn't produced fruit probably in a long time, you know. And that's like God wants us to produce fruit in our life, saints. We can't, we can't be stagnant in our life. You know, God has given us all kinds of gifts, skills, and talents. And he's just saying, step out. Step out in faith and use that gift that I gave you. Even if it's one gift, bless God with that one gift. Say, God, I have this one gift. It might not seem much to you, but honor God with it. Bless God with it. Amen. Utilize it. And before you know it, you're going to see all types of other gifts in your life. 
Amen? Amen. Things that you didn't have before, you're going to say, bless God, where did I get all this stuff from? God is saying, because you were a faithful steward over the thing that I gave you, that one thing that I gave you. You know, and a lot of times we have stuff inside of us. How many of you know that um, the Israelites, right? It took longer for God. It took longer for the Israelites to get Egypt out of them than it took for God to get them out of Egypt. See, God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt like quick. It didn't take that long. But how long did it take for Egypt to get out of the Israelites. Forty years they murmured and complained all through the wilderness. You know, not having faith, not believing God. And a lot of times we get in a situation and we say, God, why are we going through this? Why, are we, why do we have to deal with this? Remove this thing, remove this thing. But we might not notice that God is trying to get something out of us. Amen. We might be in a situation and saying, God, get me out of this situation. But God is trying to get something out of us that he doesn't want there. That's that's uh, not helping us produce the fruit that He wants us to produce in our life, saints of God. So that's why the Bible also says to examine ourselves, to make sure that we're in the faith, right? To look at ourselves, saying, God, am I producing the fruit that you call me to produce? Amen. Can I add some things to my life? That helped me produce more fruit. Amen? And the answer is yes. More of Jesus always brings forth more fruit, saints of God. See, we can do nothing of ourselves. See, we can't try to go and do all this other stuff, stuff and try to do it by works and trust in our works, trust in our good deeds, trust in everything that we're doing. No, we abide in Christ. And when we abide in Christ and in his word, that's when the fruit starts coming forth in our life, saints. We need to trust in him and not on ourselves and not to rely on ourselves because this isn't a message of, of, of doing good works. This is a message of relying on Jesus so we can bear the fruit that Jesus wants us to produce in our life. We can do nothing of ourselves, saints, nothing. And the moment that we get out of the flat, out, out of the spirit and into the flesh and think that we could do things on our own is when we begin to get in trouble. We need to completely trust and rely on Jesus in every situation, in every area of our life and give him glory for everything that we have, right? For our jobs, for our families, for the blessings that he's given us. He gets all the glory. Amen. Amen. He gets all the glory. Amen. Amen. He gets the glory for the fruit in our lives. And I'll get to some. Hold on. <laughs> I'll get ahead of myself. Myself. So we see. That it is, so it's the will of God. Let's look at, so, let me see here. I got a little ahead. So the blessing of God in our lives causes fruitfulness and growth. So this, we saw Jesus' response to the fruitless tree, right? It got withered away. And basically, what are we good for if we are not bearing fruit for the kingdom of God? You know, what, what, are, what are our desires as a Christian? You know, our desire and our goal should be to bear fruit for the kingdom, to please our to please our father. Amen. So it is. Let's look at Matthew 513 and Matthew 513. The word of God refers to us as the salt of the earth. Right. And it says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it uh, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So God calls us the salt of the earth. So he wants us to continue having flavor. He wants us to continually bear fruit in our lives. Just like that tree Jesus saw, he said, well, this tree ain't bearing no fruit. What is it good for? If it's not, if it's not doing what it was intended to do, if it wasn't doing what it was created to do, saints of God, we are created to bear fruit. We are created to be the salt of the earth to be the light to those out there who are lost, amen, wherever we may go, however that looks like for God's plan in your life, right? God, you know how God wants you to shine. You know when God wants you to shine. You know when God tells you to go forth and, and to do what he tells you to do, amen? And that's how we, we remain uh, seasons in our life, remaining obedient to the word of God, trusting him, remaining in his word, amen? I want to be fruitful, saints of God, and I know you guys do too. 
So it is the will of God for his children to be fruitful. Let's look at Isaiah 27, verses 2 through 6 in the New Living Translation. And it says, in that day, sing about the fruitful, sing about the fruitful vineyard. I, the Lord, will watch over it, watering it carefully. Day and night I will watch so no one can harm it. My anger will be gone if I find briars and thorns growing in it. I will attack them and I'll burn them up. Unless they turn to me for help, let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. The time is coming when Jacob's descendants will take root, Israel will bud, and blossom and fill the whole earth with fruit, saints of God. God's desire is to have the whole earth filled with fruit. Amen? And where is that fruit going to come from? It's going to come from us. Amen? We are going to bear that fruit. We are going to spread the earth with the fruit that God has given us, the love, right? We'll get into the fruit, fruits of the Spirit in, in, in just a little bit. But this is God's desire. See, he said th th those thorns and briars... He says he'll burn them up. Why? They do not produce fruit. They're not producing any fruit at all. So God desires to see fruit in our lives. So the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise, Proverbs 11.30 tells us. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. See, the tree is living. A dead tree cannot produce fruit, saints of God. A dead tree cannot produce fruit. And we see that it also multiplies because... Uh, of the fruit of the righteous shall win souls, saints of God. And souls is multiplication into the kingdom. It adds to the kingdom. It multiplies. And that's what God wants to see. He wishes for none to perish, but all come to repentance into the saving knowledge of God's truth to continually grow, right? God's kingdom is always growing, always thriving, and always fruitful, saints of God. You, <clears throat> you have to live a life that produces righteous fruit, saints of God. John 15, verses 1 through 5. And we'll read that. And it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Listen here, he says, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. He says, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you could do nothing. So Jesus gives us a clear picture here how we remain fruitful. We abide in him. If a believer is not bearing fruit, it's because they're not abiding in Jesus. Jesus clearly says that he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So the remedy for not, not seeing fruit in our life and living a fruitful life is to become closer to Jesus, right? To get into the word of God, abide in the word of God. And this is where it, it, it gets good because Jesus is starting to say, okay, you got to abide in me. You got to abide in the word. See, he took his disciples on a journey and he showed him a tree, right? He showed him a tree that was supposed to be bearing fruit, but it was not bearing fruit. So he gave them an example before he actually got into Luke eleven twenty four, before he got to say, okay, whatever you say will come to pass, okay? If you say it will obey. And that's, I, I taught a little message on that. If you say it will obey, if you speak to the tree, it'll obey you. Jesus said, if you speak to this mountain, do not doubt in your heart and tell it to be removed. It'll be removed, saints of God. But he wanted to show them something because you know what? It's hard to call things forth, call those things that are not as though they are when you don't have a clear conscience towards God. Amen. When you're not walking in the calling that you know you're supposed to be walking in, when you're walking in willful disobedience, it's hard to have faith to call those things that you know that you can call forth, that are yours, saints of God. So God says, okay, let's get right, bear the fruit, abide in me, trust in me, and not in yourself, and then let's move forward to calling these things forth in your life. 
See, it's, it's not about works, but it's about a condition and a position that we're in in Christ. See, to have boldness in Christ, you have to know who you are. And in order to know who you are, you have to know whose you are. Amen. And if you know whose you are, you're going to abide in the word and you're going to obey your father. See, if your father tells you to do something, you're going to be obedient and do it because you love him, because you don't want to disappoint him. Right. And your father blesses you because you're his son. Amen. Not because of any conditions. It's like when Jesus called forth, Je when Jesus came out of the water and he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You notice that when, G when God did that, he said it so everybody can hear it. But he also said it before any miracles had ever taken place in the, in the ministry of Jesus. See, he said, I am well pleased with you, my son, before you rose the dead. Before you turn the water into wine, he says, I am well pleased because you are my child. Not because of what you do, but because of who you are. You are my son. You are my heir. Saints of God, you have to know that you are a child of God, that you are heir of God, right? This is who God calls us to be, saints of God. Believers to come forth into the kingdom and to produce great fruit for the kingdom of God. Produce fruit in our homes, through our children, through our marriages, in our ministries. Amen? Fruitfulness brings growth. The life of Christ in our life brings forth fruit, saints of God. It's the will of God for us all to bear fruit in our lives. That is evident for all to see, saints of God. See, I said earlier, a lot of people look like and play the part that they are fruitful, but when you inspect things, the fruit just isn't there. We have to have the fruit, saints of God, in our life. And we have to abide in Jesus, for we could do nothing without Jesus. If a believer is not bearing fruit, it's because they're not abiding in Jesus. Mark 4, 18 through 19. Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. It says, now these are ones. Uh, so this is a, the parable about the, thorn, about, the, about the seed. And when I read John 15... It reminded me of people who might not be bearing fruit in their lives, you know, and this is what the scripture came, came to my mind. It says, now these are the ones sown amongst thorns. They are ones who hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So we can't let the cares of this world come in and replace the word of God in our life. We have to stay rooted in Christ, rooted in the word of God to bear fruit in our life, saints of God. Because Jesus clearly said, he said, abide in me and you'll bear fruit. We have to continually abide in the vine. We have to continually abide in Jesus, saints of God. We don't want to be, become unfruitful in our life. And in 2 Corinthians 9, 10, let's go there. So we know that the seed in the parable of the seed sower is the word of God. And 2 Corinthians 9, 10 reads, Now may he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase in the fruits of your righteousness. So we see here he says he supplies. So who supplies the seed? Right? God, Jesus, he supplies the seed. And what's the seed? The word of God. He says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So he says that he's going to increase the fruits of your righteousness and the seed that you have sown. So we see that God provides the seed, which is the word of God. But how do we sow the word? We speak the word. See, and that's where we get into Mark eleven twenty four. 24. We speak the word. And this, the disciples got to see something very amazing. In John 15, 7, it says, Abide in me, and my words abide in you, and you will ask what you desire, and it will be done for you. So he took his disciples on this journey, and they saw this tree. But the awesome thing about this is that his disciples actually got to see Mark eleven twenty four 24 
were in action before it even came to pass when Jesus called those things that were not as though they were. As they passed by, Jesus spoke to that tree, right? He says, no one shall ever eat fruit from you again. When they came back, the disciples saw the manifestation of Jesus' word. The word of God became so real and so evident to the disciples that they actually saw what Jesus said and it actually manifested into what he said it was going to be. And that's when he got into Mark eleven twenty-four. 24. So we can read this. I'm going to go ahead and read Mark 11, 20 through 25 really quick. And it goes, it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, or have the faith of God. See, they actually got to see what Jesus is about to tell them. Jesus gave them the prime example is when he cursed that tree, and it withered away, they actually saw that. So he says, have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says, it will be done. He will believe that you, re he, he, I'm sorry, tossed into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but he, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them that your father in heaven may also forgive you. So I thought this was awesome that Jesus took them on this journey and actually demonstrated Mark eleven twenty four to them. See, Jesus called those things that were not as though they were. He called that tree to die because it actually wasn't producing fruit. It wasn't producing the things that Jesus desired for it to see. But it's funny because the, the tree died because it wasn't producing fruit, saints of God. But us as believers, we have to die in order to produce fruit. We have to die to self and to live to start actually bearing the fruit. But we see this tree died because it wasn't producing fruit. It actually looked like it was alive, but it wasn't doing what it was intended to do. It actually looked like it was capable of producing fruit, but it wasn't living its purpose. It wasn't living and doing the things that God created it to do. Saints of God. But God says once we die, once we die to self, we can start producing fruit for the kingdom of God in our lives. And that's awesome, saints of God. And if you see also in the scripture, it says that the, the disciples heard in the first scripture that we read in Mark 11, verse, uh, Mark 11, verses 14, when Jesus first cursed the fig tree, it's, he said, let no one ever eat from fruit, fruit from you again. And it says, and his disciples heard it. They heard the word, saints of God. The word of God took root into their heart. It was, a, it was a good seed that was planted within their heart, saints of God. The word of God is, is, is a wonderful seed. And we saw in, which, um, let me see here. It was about the parable of the seed. If we can go back to the, the parable of the seed. I'm just trying to find that. Mark chapter 4, I believe it's uh, verse 20. So the disciples, they heard it. So it says here, but these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word of God, saints of God. So they heard the word. When that word was planted in their hearts, when the word of Jesus went forth from them, they heard it. They received Jesus' word. It says, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100-fold saints of God. 
When we hear the word, right, we have to receive it and we have to accept it. It says here they accepted the word of God in their life, saints of God. When we hear the word, let's accept it into our lives. Amen. Amen. So we see <clears throat> that we could die to self and that we could, we could live for Christ. We as believers are the opposite of the tree. We cannot star start bearing fruit until we die to self. We see the, de the, tree, di the tree died for bearing fruit no fruit and we as believers have to die to start bearing fruit in Matthew 16 24 it says then Jesus said to his disciples if any, any of you wants to be my follower you must give up your own way take up your cross and follow me if you try to hang on to your life you will lose it but if you give up your life for my sake you will save it amen or you will find it when I gave up my life for Christ I found who I was Probably many of you, when you became born again, it was like you came home. You actually came home. You said, okay, this is who I'm supposed to be. This is who I am. Born again. New things. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So we're just going to look at some of the fruits um, that we see, some bad fruits. We talked about the fruits that we get at the grocery store. Saints of God. Amen. And the other fruit in our life. In Galatians 5, I'm going to read through verses 19 through 26. And it talks about the works of the flesh, and then it gets into the, into the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and alike, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And here's the fruit, saints. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, saints of God. Amen. So Jesus shows us in Mark 11, Mark 11, 23, that for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain to be removed. Saints of God, I want to encourage you. You know that anything that we may have in our life that isn't bringing God glory, we can get rid of those things. We abide in the word of God. We abide in Christ. Amen. And bear fruit for the kingdom of God. And how do we do that? We saw that the seed, right, was the word of God. And we could sow the word by speaking in our life. So we speak forth the word of God. Declare the word of God. Declare the promises of God over your life. You want to see fruit in, in your life? Start declaring. Amen. Start declaring. Say, thank you, God that I have the fruit of the Spirit, that I have love, that I have joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control. Start declaring these things in your life. Start believing the Word of God and walking them out in your life and watch the fruit of God start manifesting in your life and growing like you've never seen it before. Abide in Jesus. Abide in His Word because that's where you will find life and that's where you will find growth, saints of God. Amen? Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for, for coming to 8 o'clock service this morning. You guys stick around for 10 o'clock service. Minister Val will be bringing us a word. Um, you guys can go hang out, go get you some, some uh, what, Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams. <laughs> and if you guys can't stick around, you guys have a wonderful and blessed week.